Hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Asma, for the introduction. So today in this session, I am going to discuss about uh, hybrid API management. My name is Sanjay Margot and I am working for WSO2 uh, as a software architect. I am primarily work with the uh, WSO2 API manager team and I am uh, mainly all looking in the research and development part of the API management product. So uh, this is our agenda for today. Uh, first, I will briefly discuss about what API management is and uh, I'm sure you all know what API management is and uh, uh, since you are here for uh, like last two sessions as well, uh, you have some idea about what API management is and uh, what are the benefits of API management. But I will quickly go through just to, uh, you know, complete uh, this session. And uh, I will discuss about uh, different component of uh, WSO2 API management story. And uh, then I will discuss about uh, on-premise API management deployment and uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of uh, on-premise deployment. Then I will discuss about uh, cloud API management deployment. Then uh, I will discuss about hybrid cloud API management. And uh, under hybrid cloud API management deployment, there are different deployment strategies. I will discuss uh, in detail about those stuff as well. Then uh, in a previous session, one discussed about uh, micro gateway and uh, how micro gateway fits in our solution and uh, what are the advantages of having micro gateway. So I will discuss about uh, micro gateway uh, and how it relates to hybrid API management deployment. Then uh, I will finally discuss about WSO2 micro gateway and uh, how it fits very well with the hybrid API management deployment. Okay, so uh, if we take API management, as you can see in this diagram, in your right hand side, you have a set of data and services and your left hand side, we have people. So these people need to interact with these data and services. So how they do that? Uh, they basically use applications because uh, people cannot read this data in, and uh, they are in machine and uh, binary format. So they use applications, okay? So uh, that application can be mobile device, IoT, web application, mobile application, anything like that. So now uh, when these applications try to communicate with these services and data, there's a, some kind of a challenge, right? Because if your service exposes some data in JSON format or XML format, but your services expose as a, uh, any different format, such as CSV or any other data format, there's some kind of a, a disconnect, disconnected story between these two components, right? So there should be some component uh, bridge this gap. So basically integration and API management layer comes into picture at this time. Okay? So, uh, Sometimes this application need a different format. So uh, at this layer, we should be able to, you know, do uh, message transformation, service orchestration, those kind of things. At the same time, in the services and data, uh, with the services, you may have uh, some kind of a sensitive information. So you don't need to expose all your data to outside people. So in such case, you may need to do some kind of authentication, authorization, and uh, uh, some kind of a traffic management policy and those kind of stuff you have to apply. So that part also handled by the API management layer. So basically what we do is we apply set of quality of services and uh, we allow you to do uh, lightweight mediation and service orchestration with uh, integration and API layer. So this is how it works. So basically when these uh, uh, applications invoke your services and data, they send some kind of a security metadata. So at API gateway, so we will discuss about component in detail later. So when they invoke uh, these services, uh, services from the outside, they have to send some kind of a security metadata. So at API Gateway, what we do is we extract this uh, security metadata and apply quality of services that I discussed earlier. Okay, so uh, now we will discuss about the different components. So I'm sure you know about this component, but I will quickly go through because uh, when we discuss about the deployment, we deploy these components. So we, ha we should have a clear idea about this component. So first component I'm going to discuss is uh, API Publisher, which is back office application. And uh, most of the time when you need to create API, you go there and you create API. So at this point, uh, you can uh, point your backend system and you can engage different throttling policies, uh, different mediation logic, everything you apply here. Next component is uh, API Developer Portal. So API Developer Portal basically a place where you go and subscribe to your APIs. For example, I am a, a mobile application developer and I need to develop some application which helps you to, you know, get the weather predictions and kind of things. So in such cases, what I do is I will go to developer portal and search for my APIs 
and uh, subscribe when you start using. So next component is the gateway. Gateway is main point which act as a policy enforcement point. When you interact with these services, first point you have to enter is the gateway. So gateway will apply quality of services like I discussed earlier. So key manager is the component which mainly handle uh, security and uh, authentication part. Then uh, analytics part, uh, with that uh, we collect some information about your service invocation pattern and uh, different ways you invoke API and uh, use that to build some business intelligence and uh, some stats models. And next component is the traffic manager. So for example, uh, if you have API that need to access uh, only 100 times within a minute, some people, some person have to keep this uh, counters in memory. So this traffic manager component maintain all the counters and type windows and uh, say gateway what need to do. So in this diagram, you can see every, every component how they are connected to each other. So we have publisher, when someone create API, it goes to gateway or micro gateway. Then we do have a developer portal where people come and start consume API. So by the time API consumer invoke this API, we do authentication, traffic management, and uh, we push uh, usage data to analytics servers. Then we uh, collect stat and events. So when they invoke API, after doing all the quality of services, they can go to microservices, web services, or ESB, which have kind of a service orchestration. So now, uh, with this understand about API management and different component of API management story, we will move into on-premise deployment. So on, in on-premise deployment, what we will usually do is, we deploy all these component in your enterprise network. So typically, when we do this kind of uh, on-premise deployment, uh, most of the time, you will not allow external people to collaborate with these APIs. So I'm sure most of you have uh, on-premise deployment as well as cloud deployment. So uh, this is how typical uh, on-premise deployment looks like. So all the six components that I discussed early, you can see here. So all the components reside within the enterprise network, and your delivery channels also reside within this exact same network. Uh, if we take example of like uh, restaurant, uh, and uh, if you have some kind of a post machines, and uh, some kind of IoT devices, and all these are considered as delivery channels. And you may have complete API management solution within your organization. So there's no any requirement to uh, interact with external parties or any need, con any connection to outside world. So this is a uh, small different, uh, very slight different version of uh, on-premise deployment. So in this case also, we deploy all the component in your on-premise network. But at the same time, we expose API gateway and uh, developer portal to outside world. For example, uh, if you go back again to our restaurant example, you have your restaurant and you produce pizza, and sometimes you may need to expose your pizza ordering API to outside world. So external developers can uh, develop their travel applications and other food ordering application based on your APIs. So in such case, what we have to do is, we have to expose API gateway and developer portal to outside world. But all your data and all your component reside within your enterprise network. So with this model, external delivery channels. In this case, it can be a mobile device or mobile application deployed on your uh, uh, Android or iOS device can invoke these APIs. Okay. So, so how many of you have uh, uh, on-premise deployment, on-premise API management deployment? Raise hand. Okay. I can see a couple of you. So, uh, when, we have, uh, when you have on-premise deployment, what are the challenges you face? So most of the time, uh, uh, you have different challenges with that first. We'll start with the advantages. So when you have on-premise deployment, we have complete control over this deployment because this uh, uh, hardware and network, everything belongs to you. So you do have complete control over this deployment. And also it is somewhat easy to do integration because your backend, API management, client, everything is within your network. So that is somewhat easy to integrate. And also, uh, it reduces the latency of traffic uh, because uh, your backend uh, service and client reside within uh, close proximity. And also, uh, uh, due to some kind of a traffic, uh, uh, traffic related policies, some organizations have different policies uh, which uh, does not allow you to you know, route your traffic to outside network or through the internet. So in such cases also, this model will help you. And also, accidentally, due to some reason, if internet goes down, uh, still your uh, 
uh, restaurant can operate because all your data, clients, and everything reside your internal network. So if you go back, uh, go to uh, disadvantages when you have this kind of deployment. Total cost of ownership would be high because you have to maintain uh, your servers and you should have uh, skilled uh, engineers to ma maintain and manage all this deployment. And also sometimes it is somewhat difficult to collaborate with external parties because uh, they have to access uh, your system and they have to come to your data center and that kind of uh, challenges are also there. And also another main disadvantage is it is difficult to implement a disaster recovery uh, solution and uh, some kind of a failover. If your data center goes down, uh, you are in trouble. So if we come back to our uh, restaurant application, so if due to some reason, if this system corrupt or anything happen to uh, your servers, then your total business uh, goes down. And also, uh, when uh, demand goes high, it is difficult to scale. So if we again come to your uh, a uh, restaurant sample, if there are like 1,000 people come at once to uh, your uh, restaurant and they start ordering and uh, this system may crash because in your local system service and uh, you have a finite amount of resources. Unlike cloud solutions, you have a very limited of resources. If you have cloud solution, you can scale them infinitely. So those are the challenges with uh, on-premise deployment. So now we will see uh, what uh, Cloud API management is uh, look like look like. So uh, in cloud API management, all API calls and uh, complete deployment address in the cloud. So uh, there can be multiple cloud options. So first option is uh, uh, you can deploy your API management solution on a public cloud. For example, Google Cloud, Amazon Azure, or any place you can deploy your uh, API management solution and access that through the internet. So other type of uh, public API management solution is uh, API management solution uh, which offers as a SaaS. Uh, as example, we can think about uh, WSO2 API Cloud. In WSO2 API Cloud, uh, we offer you uh, a complete API management solution. Uh, users do not have to worry about patching or uh, updating system or anything like that. Only thing they have to use is do is uh, create your account and start using this system. So when you use this, you have to pay as you go, uh, and uh, you don't have to you know, manage or anything like that. So scaling, uh, securing, patch application, system update, all these stuff handled by the solution owners. So WSO2 API management, uh, cloud API management offering is just one example. There are plenty of other services as well. So with uh, this cloud model, uh, you can see all six components that we discussed early deployed in the cloud. So all the incoming traffic and all the delivery channels will consume these APIs through the internet. So if we have some APIs which call to each other, they can call, still call internally. That is why I mentioned this api.internal.com. So this is how a cloud model looks like. So when we have cloud model, but still uh, some of your services may reside within your internal network. So there can be services and data which you cannot directly deploy into internet uh, due to some of the reasons. So in such cases, what we have to do is, from the cloud, we have to create some bridge uh, which connect to your uh, local services and uh, let uh, uh, other people to consume these uh, services and data. So uh, these non-cloud data and services need to connect to uh, cloud through secure tunnel or some kind of a network functionality. So in such cases also, delivery channels uh, access your API through the internet. And uh, this uh, API management solution deployed on the cloud will uh, route that request to your backend services. So when we have cloud API management deploy model, main advantage would be cost effective. Because if we take uh, WSO2 API cloud kind of solution, uh, there we have shared resource model. So if you have 1,000 users and uh, uh, when they try to start uh, consuming these APIs, we scale system dynamically uh, as load goes high. And uh, since it is a shared, shared resource model, uh, our total cost for uh, this implement solution and manage uh, would be less. And also it is somewhat easy to manage 
uh, because infrastructure management uh, is something you don't need to worry anymore. And also patching, updating, uh, and uh, all the things uh, care, take care by the solution owner. And it is uh, easy to scale and implement disaster recovery as well, because uh, if we go to our uh, pizza or restaurant example, uh, if we see some abnormal traffic pattern, what we can do is we can spawn set of new gateways in different geographical locations as load goes high. So with that uh, and unlimited resources available in the cloud, we don't have to worry about uh, scaling anymore. So that is about scaling. And if we come to disaster recovery, so if we see some catastrophic failure in Asia Pacific region, you can take exact same copy of this API management deployment and spawn in US region. So with that, you can address uh, disaster recovery as well. So when we have a cloud model, there are a lot of advantages. At the same time, we have disadvantages as well. So for example, uh, again, if we come to our restaurant example, we have our post machines in our restaurant, and we have data and services in our restaurant. But if our solution resides in the cloud, API management solution resides in the cloud, our post machine have to uh, first go to cloud and uh, do the API management stuff, then come, de come back to our local uh, data and services. So there can be additional uh, latency and uh, it can be uh, inefficient. And also uh, with this model, you have to expose your data and services to internet directly. So some of the uh, organizations doesn't allow us to do that. And if you have that kind of policy, basically you are in trouble. And uh, if you have some uh, regional sensitive information, so if you go to uh, Europe region and uh, EU specific uh, uh, countries, and uh, in uh, that region they have different regulations which does not allow you to uh, route your traffic outside that particular region. So if you have that kind of regulation, then again we are in trouble because uh, even our client and servers both reside in a specific region, our API management solution may reside in another different network. So those are main uh, disadvantage of cloud model. So with this, uh, uh, we, discuss, we will discuss about hybrid API management solution. So with hybrid API management solution, what we are going to do is, we will get uh, advantages of both on-premise and uh, cloud deployment and build some kind of a hybrid solution. So when we do hybrid cloud API management deployment, what we typically do is, we will deploy a set of component in on-premise and other set of component in the cloud. So, like I discussed earlier, API Gateway is the key part uh, in a complete API management story. So, due to that reason, most of the time, uh, when we do this uh, hybrid API management deployment, we do deploy API Gateway in regional or on-premise deployment as demand goes. So, this is uh, how uh, typical hybrid API management uh, deployment looks like. As you can see here, we have a set of component uh, deployed in the cloud, and uh, uh, we have a set of gateway deployed in the on-premise uh, deployment. So again, if we go to our restaurant example, uh, all our component deployed in the cloud. So this can be one restaurant. So in this particular restaurant, we do have a set of post machines, and we do have a set of data, and we have a separate gateway for them. So they do not have to go through all the way through internet, and uh, come back to backend service. And uh, if you have any external delivery channels, they can still consume this API through the internet. So when we do that, uh, this gateway can talk with uh, cloud API management solution to do key validation and uh, usage data metering and other stuff. So this is just an example. So you can do it other way as well. So you can have all other main component in your on-premise deployment and deploy gateways on the cloud. So that pattern also uh, you can implement. So when we do this uh, kind of a deployment, I said the gateways plays the crucial part. So when we deploy gateway in uh, this kind of deployment, there are different patterns that we can do. So first pattern I'm going to discuss is uh, private jet mode. So in private jet mode, what we will do is, we will deploy dedicated API gateway for each backend service. So in this particular scenario, so I have my health API, and uh, in this enterprise network, I'm only going to use the health API. So what I will do is, I will just call to central API management solution, 
and get only uh, API runtime, which is specific to health API, and start consume it. So I don't have to get all the APIs uh, from central API management system. I can get only one API and start using. So that is private jet mode. So next one is the sidecar mode. So with the sidecar mode, what we will do is we will deploy API gateway along with the services. So if you have ever worked with uh, Docker and Kubernetes uh, world, so you know something called pod. So pod can have multiple nodes. So in this particular scenario, you can think this module as a pod. And uh, health API contained API gateway can be one node. Health service can be another node. So with this, uh, when you scale this pod, uh, you don't have to worry about scaling gateway and backend system separately. So next mode is uh, centralized gateway. In the centralized gateway mode, what we will do is we will deploy all the gateways in this uh, centralized gateway, and it can communicate with the multiple backend systems. So if we have APIs like which get like 10 to 20 requests per day, there's no point of deploy them uh, in a separate container or separate runtime. So in such case, what we do is we will combine all these APIs into one runtime, which is called as a centralized gateway, and deploy that in your deployment. Okay, and also uh, multi-cloud integration is something you can do. So with the multi-cloud integration, what you can do is uh, you can have uh, your API management solution in uh, one cloud, and you can deploy a set of gateways in different cloud options. So if you have a specific solution in the Google Cloud, which you have cl your clients and backend data in that cloud, what you can do is get a copy of gateway and deploy that in Google Cloud. So with that, it uh, uh, allows you to you know, uh, route complete traffic within G Cloud itself without uh, connecting to external world. So now you will discuss about what uh, micro gateway does in hybrid API management solution. So first we will see what micro gateway is. I am sure no one discuss about uh, this uh, in detail. So micro gateway is kind of a lightweight uh, message processor for uh, uh, HTTP messages or uh, messages. And uh, it can have a complete set of features or subset of features that our gateway have. And it should natively support the microservices architecture. And uh, then uh, we will see why this micro gateway important uh, hybrid API management story. So uh, some of the characteristics that no one discuss are small startup time, less resource consumption, easy to configure and manage, DevOps friendly, ability to run in lockdown. And those are the main uh, characteristics uh, that he discussed. So now let's see how these things map with hybrid API management solution. So if you remember, when I discuss about uh, uh, sidecar mode, so in sidecar mode, what we will do is we will deploy uh, gateway along with the uh, backend uh, service. So for example, if you have Tomcat server, uh, which runs with uh, uh, 500 MB, let's say, and uh, it can handle 1,000 uh, requests per minute. And in such case, what happens if you have to deploy gateway along with that, which consumes 2 gigabyte of RAM? That would be inefficient, right? Because you have uh, one, one unit, and your service consumes uh, 500 MB, but your gateway consumes 2 gig RAM. So in such cases, we should have some kind of a small micro gateway. So that is why less resource consumption is important. And sometimes you will have to deploy these micro gateways in your IoT devices. So with the current trend, we are seeing uh, people are deploying uh, micro gateways in IoT devices or different kind of lockdown environments. So in such environment, Ability to process message offline is very important. So if it need uh, internet connection every time, it is not going to work anymore. So if we take traditional API gateway, they need internet connection to you know do key validation and other stuff. So with this micro gateway thing, uh, we don't need to worry about that anymore. And also, uh, easy to configure and manage is another key thing, because uh, this regional and on-premise deployment, most of the time done by the external parties. So they do not have all the luxury and all the uh, knowledge set that we have in cloud or uh, mainstream uh, gateway deployment. So in such cases, ability to configure them easily and uh, manage them easily is uh, very important. So another thing is uh, this micro gateway is specifically designed to uh, uh, scale and uh, like I discussed, uh, 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 ability to run in lockdown environment is very important. So with all these features, uh, 
micro gateway fits very well with hybrid API management deployment. Each time when you deploy uh, regional gateways, you can think about whether you need micro gateways or uh, traditional API gateways. So with this approach, uh, you can deploy micro gateways anywhere uh, that you need. So you can have your central API management solution, and if you have, if you have a specific requirement to run uh, your gateway in uh, IoT device, you can do that as well. And you can do uh, same on your workstation, and you can do same on any of the cloud. So what you have to do is just get a copy of gateway and deploy it any place that you need. Okay. So then uh, we'll discuss little bit about uh, WSO API and the micro gateway. So uh, no one discuss about all these things. I'm not going to talk about this stuff. So uh, if we go to deployment process, uh, so he mainly discuss about how our API management solution uh, can generate uh, micro gateway artifacts. So in this case, you can see we have our API management solution and we do have our traditional API gateway. At the same time, you can play with micro gateway toolkit. So any of you have API Manager 2.5 uh, based deployment uh, with uh, traditional API gateway. Uh, at the same time, you can play with micro gateway toolkit. So without uh, trouble, without having any trouble or any interference to main system, you can communicate with API management solution and get metadata of the API and build that as a micro gateway artifact. So with this, uh, while main system is running, you can create micro gateway artifact for each API. Or else you can generate API gateways per label. For example, if you have 100 APIs and uh, you have five APIs belong to HR department, you can generate gateway runtime which is specific to HR department. So what you have to do is simply call uh, micro gateway toolkit and say, okay, create gateway runtime only for the HR APIs. You have to provide your label and then with that command, micro gateway toolkit will generate uh, a specific gateway, which is contained only five gateways related to HR department. So with that, uh, you can uh, selectively uh, create, uh, selectively uh, get set of APIs and uh, create runtime for them. So like uh, no one discussed, uh, we can generate Docker and Kubernetes artifacts as well. So, with this, uh, we have to provide the specific information. Once we provide them, uh, they can generate Docker images. And uh, if you have uh, your local uh, Docker environment, we will uh, push them into local Docker registry. And if you have a remote uh, Docker Hub account, you can provide that details as well. So by the time you build this micro gateway artifact, uh, it will communicate with uh, Docker Hub and push your image to there. And at the same time, it will generate Kubernetes artifact so uh, with this Kubernetes artifact, uh, you can run uh, kubectl command and deploy this gateway into uh, Minikube or Google Kubernetes engine. And uh, if you need to spawn like 100 APIs at once, you can do it within seconds. So that's about micro gateway. And uh, with this, uh, I'm going to conclude my session. And I hope you have a better understanding about hybrid API management solution and uh, what micro gateway does with that. And if you have any questions uh, about this session, please talk to me outside. Uh, thank you very much for joining this session today. Thanks.